What's going on, y'all? It's your man, June Archer here, the winner circle on thisis50.com. I have an amazing guest today. You know him. You love him. And if you've uh, watched him in one of his shows, you hate him. But the one thing is you can't deny the talent. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, London Brown. London, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate you, brother. Man, I'm so excited to have you, brother. Um, how have you and the family been during the pandemic? People, you know, uh, fortunately, people have been staying healthy, being pretty cool. Um, if they did get sick, it wasn't too crazy, man. So we're alive, we're well, no complaints, man. That's what I'm talking about. Now, a couple of things, man. You are an amazing talent. For those who don't know, uh, you're a comedian. Uh, you're an impressionist and an actor and a businessman. Uh, with all the hats that you wear, what is your favorite or or is it something that you kind of juggle? It's like I'm going I'm going I'm going to hang my my acting hat up and I'm going to do some some comedy. Uh, I'm going to work do, like what is your favorite piece of being London Brown as it, as it pertains to just creative arts? Uh, you know, if if I had if I had to only choose one, it might be stand up because you know, Stand up, I don't need anybody's permission to do it. You know? mm. uh, it's all me, good or bad, it all falls on me. So I like that liberty. But they really run hand in hand because when I do stand up and I talk about whatever the situation is, I incorporate, you know, the acting naturally falls in line with that. Or if I'm acting, um, I definitely will work my comedic stuff within the part. Uh, so fortunately, they work together. But um, but I do like stand up as far as the liberty that comes with that. Now with stand up, that that is a an exercise like muscle memory. Do you ever step out and say, you know what, I'm gonna hit the comedy club and just kind of stretch my legs, work on this one joke I've been thinking about while I was filming something? Do you ever have the opportunity to stretch your legs to try out new material? Yeah, I, I try new material out uh, sometimes in conversation, or even from doing these interviews, I get asked certain questions that will provoke uh, a story. And then I say, oh man, I'm write that down. That might be something I can do. So, you know, it's just kind of tight right now because of, because of the film schedule, the shooting schedule. But um, I, I, work, I still work out a little bit and, and make that happen and uh, find things along the way. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things where your mind is always going. Your pen is always going. You always just make a quick footnote, circle back to it. But it, that's all we're doing. Now, in, in that art form for you, with everything that's been going on, uh, Me Too, uh, police injustice, and we're just talking about bad police, we're not talking about all police. Uh, some of the things that we've been so sensitive of over the past couple of years, do you find that as a comedian, it's it's kind of... It's the gift and the curse because you want to talk about something uh, that may be funny, but people may be really sensitive to it. But that's what you guys do. Like, that is the reason why we love comedians, because they touch on things that we can't talk about, that we that we find funny, that we don't find funny, that may be uncomfortable. Do you feel like we've gone too far in terms of being sensitive that comedians can't really perform material that they really want to get out? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think... Stand-up is like the last of the purest forms of art. And so I just think that we're at a, we're at a point now to where, you, yeah, like everything is so, it's so delicate. And, but I, think, I just think a, a lot of stuff in general has become, has become that. And um, so now it just it forces the writer to have to find these new clever ways to address what he wants to address. You know what I mean? And, or... You know, besides, because the thing about it is too, there are, there are jokes, man. I think if they're set, they're set up right, um, and 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 long as they're funny. Now, of course, obviously, you can't make everybody laugh, so somebody's gonna be tired about something. But I think you know the only way to that question. I think kind of like the only way to almost really kind of get back to that is if this is why they be locking phones up. This is why because sometimes people will take a. A, a sound bite of a joke, release that with no context. Context, nobody knows what's going on to it, and now all people hear is like the tail end of the joke. They don't understand the setup. 
You know what I mean? And that kind of thing is how things just misconstrued. And it's, it's unfortunate because it's just slowly chipping away at the art being its purest. But that's why people laughed at these classic Richard Pryor albums and Paul Mooney albums because it was raw and it was real and it was honest. Now, you have, you know, the comedian has to decide how honest he want to be. You know what I mean? And that's unfortunate because it starts to chip away at, at the art itself. If you can, I, I want you to picture no COVID and we're at the LA Forum, right? And there's three comedians, dead or alive, and you are part of the bill. Who would you have with you as as a, an amazing comedy show? And who would open and who would close? You could you could bring three dead or alive with you. Who would they be? Three dead or alive comedy show. Ooh. Mm. All right. Mm. I'm going to go. Ooh, wait. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Bernie. Oh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, Bernie, because I, I, we we need that one. But, you know, I ain't, cause I ain't scared of you. Because initially I started thinking about who my favorite three are, but if right. I think about putting the show together, I gotta think about this too. So I probably go, I probably go, Bernie. Uh, this might be too. This might be too crazy of a show. Ooh. All right. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Paul Mooney. Ooh. Paul Mooney. Uh, Bernie Mac, different styles. I mean, somebody wanted a heck of a show. Let's go for Treese O'Neill out of Boston. Peace be upon him. Wow, Treese is dope too. Treese is dope. But they, are they all? Yeah, I named all three that have passed away. But yeah, those yeah. three I would like to. Uh, I mean, that that all of them are their own headline in their own right. They all can just rock a whole room by themselves. But. I just think about all of what's going on today. It'd be nice to hear the commentary of those guys um, and see what they actually thought. And then also, all, all of them wasn't afraid to say what was on their mind. And yeah. I, mean, we can, I would bring a shock value show to the world. Like, here's these three finna just unleash whatever it is. And, 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 and after they finish the show, they go back to heaven. That's, that would be <laughs> No, that would, that would be, we're done here. We're done. Mic drop. Back to the gates, right? Back to the gates. No. Man, I, I think that would be that would be dope, man. Even even if you could do it uh for one night, man, that would that would be amazing. Night, that would great, that would be amazing. You did five seasons of baller on HBO with the amazing Rock Johnson. How was it working with him? Like what is his work ethic? How was it on set? Is he a jokester? Uh, what did you What did you learn? What was the the most best thing that you learned? I know I, I threw a bunch of stuff at you, but I got you. I got you. Um, really humble dude, and uh, good energy because as big of a star as he is, he could really be on something else. But he was always really good. You know, really speaks to people and stuff like that. Really chill. Um, I will say initially I thought I was going to work with The Rock, but I worked with Dwayne Johnson. Mm. Johnson is a different person. Wow. I was, I, was, I was ready for the people's champ to come in there and body slam <laughs> and, and assist directors and so forth. But he was really good. And, but and to the lesson of that, um, I did. There, there was one thing we were filming out in Miami. And um, I remember one day I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the morning, like three something in the morning. And I called his Instagram. I saw him on Instagram. And he was in the gym. I was like, he in the gym? It's like 3.45. And I knew we both had a scene tomorrow. We had to be on set the next day. But what that gave me in those couple minutes was the kind of discipline that he has. Mm. So that definitely changed the way I approach work, which is, you know, I try to gym throughout the week anyway. But if I got to work that morning, I definitely try to get to the gym because it creates another kind of a focus. So just being focused and disciplined is the one thing that I, is one of the things that I got from him. Um, and, and then also learn, you know, I, I learned some different things. I think, you know, I said, if, when I get into that position, when I'm in the, the Dwayne of my uh, career, I learned there's some, a couple things of how I want to treat people when I, when I got in that, in that space. And uh, I just want to make sure that I'm always very kind to people if I can do that, man, and, um, and really help people out the, the higher I, I ascend. So, you know, he, he, was, he was a good dude. He was a good dude. 
I mean, we need it now more than ever, man. How have the most recent events over the past pandemic uh, hit you in terms of George Floyd? And let's go back to Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown. How important is it to be not really a, a role model, London, but the best example of yourself, the best version of yourself that other young men of color, especially our young black boys, see you and say, man, I want to inspire you know, aspire to be that. I, I'm, I'm inspired and motivated to do what London does. How important do you take that? You know, um, I do take it important to share whatever it is I know uh, with young with young people. And part of the start of even uh, the start of this that would even allow people to even hear me is my grounded energy uh, by keeping grounded. It allows people to understand that, because first of all, people expect me to be this other type of a vibe anyway, um, because they see they see me on the different shows, they see the billboards and all that kind of thing. So when I debunk all of that weirdness <laughs> and talk to them on a regular level, that already that there's respect off top. So right. things that I have to say, they're even willing to listen because I'm dealing with them on the ground level. So to what you're saying, or what you're asking, it first starts with me just being grounded and knowing what the truth is. You know what I mean? When I get weird, then I can't even can't even be anything else for anybody else. But I think people will connect with the authenticity uh, that they feel for me when we, when we meet. Um, and so it starts with that. And also, I'm always trying to push people to get their life won't get their careers going now. Like I think a lot of times people, we we feel like we'll have to wait. Um, as far as everybody keep waiting for the perfect setup to get their goals going. I'm like, man, do something every day that puts you closer to where you want to be because your life changes. And I'm not just talking from some esoteric place of it's an idea over there, but being someone who's in it, who, I, I mean, I can walk people through it step by step on as soon as I decided that like this is it, I'm going after this, things it just it starts to line up. It's not overnight. But the but it really takes me getting in order and to get these things that are already set for me. But it's me. And so when I try to convey that idea to people, hopefully you know it'll click in their minds and then they can start to fall back off the drugs or the drinking or whatever it is that's pulling them from what they ultimately wanted, from what they ultimately want, which is to feel fulfilled. And we get that from going after the thing that fulfills us, our dreams, our passion, goals, stuff like that. So hopefully my lifestyle will kind of help people figure it out more than anything I can actually tell them. So you, you've been doing this for some time. Uh, what motivates you to be the best at what you do? Man, you know, it's just, what I realized was that I lost my brother. Uh, my brother was killed in 2015. And he was overall god fearing kid, played ball, wasn't involved in games, none of that. He was a solid hooper. And so when my brother was taking it, puts it, when someone when you lose somebody that close to you, it puts your life in perspective. Because it wasn't like he passed away from age or uh, even an accident. But when your life is taken, or when you know someone close to you, when their life is taken, it, again, it just puts your whole focus in a different space. So what I realized at his funeral was like, dang, how do I want to be remembered? What am I doing with my time? What am I doing with myself? So even when, when it comes down to simple things like cooking, right? Now I could just put the food on the plate, but my approach to do things well um, is so that I won't be wasting my time. Mm. So when I put the food on the plate and I plate it and I do it what, what my friends could consider to be fancy, it's not really fancy for me. That's just a bar that I set for myself because I want to do things well again so that I'm not wasting my time. It's like if I, I don't even like cooking, but if I'm going to cook, I should attempt to do it well so I don't waste my time. So with everything I'm trying to do, it's, it, it needs to be it needs to be a purpose because I don't know what my time is here. And right. this is what I gained from losing my brother. So even though losing my brother was a serious tragedy, 
But we gotta we gotta pull something positive out of that kind of thing. And what I got from that is to just make stuff count. Just do it well. Mm. Because again, even when it comes to with these with the with balls or whatever project is, I gotta make sure that every line counts. Every yep. line counts because it's incorporated into what makes the scene. Every scene counts because it incorporates the episode. Every episode counts because it incorporates what the season is. So now I know people are not break, doing as much breakdown with throughout life. I'm always in my head. So I don't, I'm always trying to work it out and connect the dots and make sure that it makes sense. So that I'm not wasting my time. When people look back over London, they look back over our friendship, whatever they can say, yo, that was a solid dude. Not that I was perfect all the time, but overall they say, that's a good dude right there. Or when I needed help, he couldn't, he couldn't give me the whole thing uh, of, the, of the amount, but you know, but he did what he could or he placed the call. You know what mm. I mean? Just, just want to make all the moves nice and thorough so that when I look back, I can say I don't, I don't feel like I had any regrets. I left it, you know, in the analogy of Kobe, I left it all on the court. So that way I, I'm good when it's time. I'm, I'm all right. They say that if you change one thing, you change everything, right? So, so for you, do you think that a fear of failure is where people go wrong or the fear of trying to be perfect? Because you just talked about it. You're not perfect. We're, we're, we are all far from perfect. But do you feel like people fail because they fail to get out the starting blocks because they're trying to be perfect? They're trying to do it, you know, uh, to try to do it like to the best of their ability. They don't they want to make any mistakes. But then the fear of failure kind of allows them to kind of be static and be stagnant that they never do anything at all. Right, you know, I, I think that it. I think well, I think the, the undergird of all of this is just fear itself. You know, mm. um, because that fear is going to. That's why sometimes when you're afraid, that's almost why. Why that's almost a, a you know like the core reason why you should do it. You know, because people look at fear as a negative, and we need fear. Fear keeps us aware. So without fear, we would just. We would just dart out into the street. But fear says, I don't want to be hit. I don't know what's coming. So I probably should check both ways. So if we utilize fear effectively, it's very it, it's solid. But I think that people are are afraid of the wrong thing. As opposed to being afraid of what might happen, uh, I think they should be afraid of what's going to happen. One mm. thing you know that if you if you don't step out, we know that you're going to be complacent. We know you're going to find yourself in the same place you were last year. We know you're not going to be progressive. So if you're going to fail, you might as well fail forward. At least you're going forward. So when you fall, it's not really even not even really a, a fail. It's more so just a lesson taught. So you get up and say, "Oh, I got that lesson." Boom. And we keep moving forward, but stay moving forward. Because now we have a lot of people today who feel like because they're moving around, they're moving forward, but they're not. They're just all over the place, but nothing is progressive. So I realized that early on too. Um, I wish I would. I wish I would even figured it out even earlier. But again, this goes back to me trying to tell people: go after the thing that fulfills you and makes you happy, because your life changes. Like. It's different for me because people ask me, say, yo, did you ever see yourself where you are today? I'm like, well, yeah, I did. This ain't even, what people think is a big deal is not hard a big deal to me. I see myself on a whole other level. But I'm not surprised by this stuff. Mm. I've been planning on this for a long time. Everything connected to my other point. Everything is connected. And even with, with the fear, I'm like, man, I know, I know what I don't want. That's what I'm afraid right. of. Just, I don't want that again. So let me use this fear to go forward. But and I, and I think that if people know how to tap into that and say, what what do I want, and how bad do you want what you say you want, that develops a discipline, or that's what it takes to really get to where you got to go. Because even if you're, you're afraid, discipline say, yo, I need to, I need to keep leveling up. You you just talked about time being a commodity. I, I want to touch on that, but I want to I want to want to go somewhere else with this, right? People are going through things right now, COVID, losing a loved one, trying to figure out, you know, if they could, you know, 
pay their rent, pay yeah. their car now, go back to school, put their kids through school. They're trying to figure it out. They don't know if there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You talk about fear being a commodity when you lost your brother. For someone who's going through it right now, what else did you lean on during that time? Because you you had uh, the hustle on Fuse that, that was out at the time. So that death came after that. So you, you were starting to step into your greatness. You were starting to get stride with this. What did you lean on during that time that someone could say, all right, man, London, thank you for that gem. Like that they can see the light at the end of the tunnel because you obviously came out on the other end of this with the whole thought process of, yo, we can't waste time. Like time is not promised to anyone. But what else, though, London, what else did you lean on? Because you, you seem strong, brother. I, I, I give that to you wholeheartedly. And I, and I say that, beloved, that we see you. We, we love what you're doing. But you you made it. You, you went through that. It was tragic. What did you lean on? Man. Uh, the first thing is, is God is at the top of all of this, mm. Um, mm. and at the and at the bottom of all of this. You know what I mean? When we fall, for me, and so I know that got a lot of people praying for me, my mother and everybody else. I know I got a lot of love in the streets for people who who just send positive vibes. So that's the first basis of all of this, because a lot of this stuff is beyond my own understanding anyway. So I can't, I don't know how, why my brother was taken or sometimes why that situation, that door closed or that one didn't open. My job is to just try to be the best me. So, but let's go more practical as far as someone trying to really figure out how to do this. My, my advice to, to anyone is always to just do something every day, grand or small, that puts you closer to where you want to be. It's not about, knowing all the ins and outs of an idea but do something every day that's the, and it goes back to the discipline um knowing how to let's say if i even if i'm not working comedy clubs every night just because i don't get up and hit a club doesn't mean i'm not working on it sometimes that particular day could be studying an old richard prior film um mm. it could be it could be watching documentaries it could be it, it, tapping into some interviews um and figuring out because everybody when i watch like sometimes people get caught up and they're excited about let's say mayweather in the in the car he drives now and the money and and and, and those and the successes that's wonderful but when i when i pull up mayweather excuse me what i do is i like to find old interviews when he was hungry Mm. Or even now, when the, the interviews that he's talking about, the process, when everybody's going to the strip club, don't get me wrong, he'll be at the strip club, but right after the strip club, he's going right to the gym. He back right to, to the, the gym. gym. While everybody drinking, he's in the gym. And oh, Mike Tyson, and knowing knowing how he grew up and, and getting picked on and all of that, um, and, and Kobe Bryant, you know, just the hunger that he had. And so I pull, I mean, I go through these interviews, I watch this stuff daily. I want one one of them that I'm watching now. I watched the Last Dance with Michael Jordan. Mm, amazing documentary. When I tell you, I watched I, I watched that that documentary. I'm telling you, like five or six times a week. Just it just it never gets old to me. Just seeing the focus, hey, he, how he experienced his loss. So being able to just be around others watch others or have these conversations with people who are progressive will start to ignite the fire within yourself. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you get around people, they're comfortable being where they are. They in the hood, they want to stay in the hood. They like the fact that nobody around them is, has gotten out. And they, they want to keep others there because as long as you're not moving, it don't reflect how much they're not moving. They're good with that. I'm not that kind of guy. Anybody around me on some sort of level will have to, will have to level up because I'm going to challenge them to. Because I got people around me that challenged me to. Dwayne didn't tell me, you need to hit the gym every day. We ain't never had that conversation. But but because I was around him and I saw how he was moving, I said, man, I got work to do. And it and, and also comes down to, when you look around at people, when you look around yourself and you see the people that are successful, you say, well, what makes them successful? And you start to pick apart the DNA and you realize that all successful people, there's a there's a common language, there's a common attitude and approach to things. I look at Dwayne. Dwayne don't do things haphazard. Dwayne's solid. He don't go to the gym. He's gonna bang the gym out. If he, when he when he does his movies, he try to pick the the, the, the best role that keep him at the top. 
You look at Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's not trying to put out subpar work, but also with all these great successful people, there's an attitude that I'm seeing. Mm. Not afraid to let their team shine. Kevin give it up to his up to his writers. Dwayne Johnson give it up to his team. Floyd put everybody on. These are the kind of things that I try to take on, even on this small level I'm on, is trying to help people try to be kind and doing something every day that puts me closer. Because we don't know who, whomever we dealing with. We don't know who gonna pop. Right. And not that it's even about that, but like as far as the attitude with how in, in which we deal with people, that's important because we don't know the uh, the, the dude that uh, let's just say let's I'll give you an, a, 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 an example. If these club owners were really just hip to this low key, they'd kiss up to everybody because they don't know which comedian gonna take off. And then right. The, the, the comedian that's that's necessary may not necessarily be the funniest in the room, but let's just take. Let's take me, for example. Well, not not the not being funny part, but <laughs> let's, take, let's be clear about that. <laughs> let's be clear. But I'm saying the part about when I was in the club, I was just happened to know that I did any, any kind of acting. So they just was like, well, this London, he, he killing the club, and he doing, he getting busy holding it down. But they didn't know how serious I was. They didn't know my theater background. They know none of that stuff. They didn't know that I could go drama or anything like that. So I'm sure they, you know, they mess around and look up and say, oh, shoot, he's on ballers. And in, in fact, not, clubs did do that. Clubs that didn't even talk to me, didn't give me a spot. Mm. Ballers came out, name on the marquee, uh, uh, picture got a little bigger on the flyers. London, where you been? We've been looking for you. No, you haven't. They gave you the vapors. They gave you the vapors. It's like, hey, yo, Vaughn, welcome to my store. <laughs> it was all of that. It was all of that. So the point is, is that do something every day that puts you where you want to be, and you be ready for the opportunities. Don't let people, don't let toxic people make you toxic. Just because they got an attitude, don't mean you ain't. You got that bracelet attitude. I always knew that I was gonna be where I am now and beyond. So I allow people to sleep on me. That's cool. I'm not concerned about that kind of thing. I'm making mental notes though. Right. I'm clocking everybody who was silent and who was who wasn't. It's all no need for me to have an attitude with you because I know where I'm about to go. It's gonna be gonna be past whatever this surface idea that you're trying to contain me to. I'm not. I'm, it's, it's all I'm good. Fine. This is just a moment. I'm good. I'm good. Keep, I'm keep good. My, my attitude positive. I'm a, I'm gonna see if I don't see you. I'm gonna see you. <laughs> that's it. Even if I don't see you, you gonna see me. And that's all. That, that's oh, it. I'm that's good. One I'm way or another, <laughs> one more neighbor, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna stop doing what you're doing. No, nah, man. I, I, I stay easy going. I stay. I, keep, I try to keep a positive vibe, man. Because again, all my my trust is in God. Anyway, at the top, at the end of all of this, I can't I can't be concerned about man and getting bothered because he bothered and he acting funny. I don't, I don't got time to do with that. I'm focused. You know, I try to keep God in my atmosphere and, and stay stay kind to people and move forward, man. You are now playing Uncle Marvin on Raising Canaan Stars. Yeah. Man, the weeks have been going by too fast. We're getting ready to wrap up. I don't think anybody wants it to end. We're, we're going to be anticipating the second season, which is underway. How is it working with everyone from patina to to the great Makai to like mr mays like how is it working with all these talented actors and you went ham the other day on your daughter jukebox you went crazy how yeah. was it like performing that scene i, I i'm throwing a lot at you brother because no, i'm just so it. excited but I, we got to talk about it <laughs> so, first of all to say that the cast is great man Great energy, good people, solid artists, and everything. So that's the first thing. If the if the, if people's attitude wasn't right, there's no way we could pull off this kind of show. Because again, like I, the example that I give is like, if we were all some college students meeting on the first day, that awkward energy in real life can play on screen. Yeah, yeah. Families. That means that as a family, we 
we can't bring bringing that outside stuff on set. So it's cool that from day one, we just click. Everybody was cool. It went no, you know, wasn't like why why Patina, you know, why she did, why she got the most lines. It wasn't none of that silly energy. You know, definitely not for me. I don't feel that I'm not that kind of guy. I don't feel that kind of way. So my whole thing was like, let me just bring my A game to bring it to every scene. Uh, every line, every scene, every episode, and just dial in so that I can pull my weight amongst these guys. So they get busy. And I figured that out from the first table read. I said, okay, I got it. Right. I said, right. he's strong. I said, oh, they strong? Okay, cool. And, and I accept it. This goes into, I can uh, I can look at that and be afraid of like, uh-oh, I hope that I can hang. Or I can say, you know what? So... I don't want to be the weak link in this. Right, right. Let me wow. Take, let me take this energy. Let me strap up, boom, and let me lock in on what I gotta do so that I can hold it down. So now let's fast forward to uh, to the scene. That scene was the hardest thing to do for for uh, for me and Haley, and uh, it was rough, man. I had really I had lots of questions, man. It took, it took me a long time to like really process what I'm going to do with that scene. And that's why I have to ask the producers, I have to ask, you know, how does this fit? I asked the writers, how does this make sense? Why is Marvin snapping his heart at his daughter? And I had to put my hands on, you know, Marvin had to put his hands on the daughter. That was, that was a rough one. But I spoke to my LBGT friends, and I was just like, yo, how real is this? You know, I just want to get down to the core of the people and really find out, because right. I, didn't want, I didn't want it to be playing no scene for the drama you know, just to play drama, does it make sense? And I spoke to them and they said, yeah, it's a real thing. That when, when, when parents find out about their kids and that lifestyle, that they, they it, it gets physical. And then also people got to consider, keep in mind, we're talking about 1991. Correct. So 1991 and in, in the black community, we wasn't having it. That's not- It's taboo, it's taboo. Today, was, today is way more liberal, it's free. Everything you just do what you want to do, 1991, we talking about Marvin was an old old school dude, street dude at that. We, we and the thing about it, it wasn't like in the black community we didn't have a gay cousin, a uncle, uh, or a hairstylist to somebody that we knew in the family. It was right. like, yo, we know what you do, and you keep it. you keep that right there, and we going and no just no disrespect, but you keep that over there. We gonna keep it right here, and that was just. That was just across the board. Right. And that was the time. That was the times. I, I want people to, who's watching and listening. That was the times. That was the times. That was the times. And, that's, and that's, that's a critical point that people have to remember was that that was the time in, in, in that era, in that Bible, what was going on. So when Marvin, Marvin was trying to figure out how to look at that, the tape with his daughter and the singing video. He was trying to figure out if that was something else, maybe a school project. He was uncomfortable. So... When we consider that and all the things, the power of what Marvin had been going through through that day, that week, his life, his sister falling out, he had a lot going on. He had a lot. And so that was just the last thing. But even after he did it, when he came to, he felt bad. That's why he broke down. He was like, man, I messed up. And that's something that Marvin's going to have to deal with for the rest of his life is that moment that he had with her and trying to rebuild that thing with her. And so, and I know that there are people who have gone through this situation who are living through this. And the only thing I can really say is to is it's a it's a step by step, day by day thing. And if you're the if you're the guy living in that that kind of way, as far as your domestic violence stuff like that, please go get some help and work out the issues that cause you to feel like that's the only way you can get your point across. Because it's not the only way. And 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 I don't want to give nothing away. You know, I want to, but I can't. <laughs> but, but I'm gonna just say, without saying, Marvin, Marvin does realize that he messed up, and he's working hard to he's working hard to re, to rebuild that with his daughter. Um, in general, we we he knows that he he that brain work has already started when he started to cry. As soon as he reached out for her, the the rebuilding of that relationship started right then and there. So it was, that was a tough one. Real rough. Scene, I, rough I, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, London. Uh, for those who don't, I'm getting goosebumps. For those that don't know how talented you are, 
in life, those moments alone, we just let's just talk about what happened. A falling out with your sister Rock. Your your brother in the hospital, you, you find him burnt up. Your your daughter you are in a tailspin. Tailspin. To be able to bring that to camera in such an authentic way, London, bro, I I can't even imagine what else you have left for us, brother. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, I wanna I wanna take a break here, man. And um, I know your first show was the hustle on on Fuse. I want to tap into some of this hip hop that you have in you. I want to bring it out. So we're gonna play some University of Dope with the great London Brown. Unpopular opinions are welcomed. You only have one opportunity to pass. There are 20 questions. Got it. The game is called University of Dope. I'm going to read them aloud. I'm going to show them to you. And we're going to do a quick speed round. We're not even going to double, no double thinking, no nothing. All right. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. University of Dope with London Brown. First one. Most influential rap song of all time. Is it A, The Message, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five? Is it B, Rapper's Delight, Sugar Hill Gang? C, Planet Rock, Africa Bambada, and the Soul Sonic Force? Or D, Sucker MCs, Run DMC? Rapper's Delight. If someone wanted to experience hip hop for the first time, what album would you give them? A, A Low End Theory, A Tribe Called Quest. B, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers. C, Straight Outta Compton, NWA. Or D, Paid in Full, Eric B and Rakim. NWA. You're stranded on a deserted island. Which album would you listen to, London? A, Black on Both Sides, Most Deaf. B, The Mess Education of Lauryn Hill, Lauryn Hill. C, Three Feet High and Rising, De La Soul. Or D, The Chronic, Dr. Dre. The Chronic. If these, if these four MCs were on the same track today, who would come out on top? A, LL Cool J. B, Rock Him. C, KRS One, or D, Big Daddy Kane? Big Daddy Kane. The greatest diss song of all time is it A, Hit Em Up, Tupac, B, Ether Nas, C, Take Over Jay Z, or D, No Vaseline, ooh, Ice Cube? Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, ooh. Ooh, let's go. I'm going to hit him up. Oh, oh, that's a rough one. Ooh, ooh. Best song dedicated to your moms is it A, Miss Jackson, Outkast, B, Hey Mama, Kanye West, C, All I Got Is You, Ghostface Killer, or D, Dear Mama, Tupac? Dear Mama, Tupac. All right, London. Who is winning in a jailhouse brawl? Is it A, The Brat, B, Remy Ma, C, Young M.A., or D, Foxy Brown? Remy Ma. If you had to erase one from hip-hop history, who would it be? A, Queen Latifah? B, MC Light, C, Lauren Hill, or D, Missy, Mr. Mina Elliott. I'm going to let you talk it out. If you got to talk it out, talk it out. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Dang. Queen, Light, Lauren, or Missy? Oh, my God, bro. Dang. You know what? Oh, my God. You can't say Queen because Queen is like, oh. <laughs> and then Lauren, all oh, that she contributed to it. Missy, dumb nice with it. Oh my gosh. You know what? Oh. All right, I'm going to go. Ooh. I'm going to be. They're going to come for me after this one. Unpopular Ooh. opinions are welcome. All right, all right I'm going to go. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to say. <laughs> You know what? I'm, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Come on, Uncle Marvin. Come on, Uncle Marvin. You got to pull the trigger on one of them. Oh, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Oh, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say light. I don't even wanna say light. All right, all right. Best hip hop soundtrack is it A. Get Rich or Die Trying. B. Above the Rim. C. Eight Mile or D. Juice. I'm gonna say. Oh man. I'm, I'm gonna go with this soundtrack. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with above. Oh dang! I like Juice too. Shout out to Khalil. I just spoke to Khalil yesterday. 
I'm going to say above the rim. Above the rim. All right. All right. Uh, I'm, oh, shoot. Best film with a rapper in it is A, Belly, B, Paid in Full, C, Pick Any Fast and Furious Except the Whack One with Ja Rule, or D, Set It Off. Ooh, best one rapping, Paid in Full. All right, London. One guy to go. If you had to choose, who would it be? A, Fabulous, B, Nori, C, Pusha T, or D, The Game? Shout out to Fabulous. He's always so love. Shout out to Nori. Nori always so love. I ain't met Pusha. I, ain't met, I don't think I'm in the game yet. Oh, my gosh, man. Why are you doing this, bro? I'm a... I'm going to say, ooh, one guy to go. Man, why are you doing me like this, dude? I'm going to say, uh, you know, I'm going to so, uh, okay, we said one got to go out of hip-hop or we said got to go out of where? One got to go out of hip-hop. If you had to choose. I'm going to say the game. All right. Now it's going to get interesting now. We're we down to the last 10. Here we go. Bro, those are rough. Mixtape master, pick the best DJs. A, Folk Master Flex, B, DJ Clue, C, DJ Drama, or D, DJ Envy? I'm going with Drama. Best music video from the following. Is it A, California Love, Tupac, B, Get Your Freak On, Missy, C, Bombs Over Baghdad, Outcast, or D, Put Your Hands With My Eyes Can See, Buster? I'm going to go with Put Your Hands With My Eyes Can See. Which crew... Would you choose as teammates on Family Feud? Would it be A, Dipset, B, Cash Money, C, G Unit, or D, Rough Riders? Rough Riders. Best Jay Z album is it A, Reasonable Doubt, B, The Blueprint, C, Volume 2, Heart Not Life, or D, 444? Four, four, four. Reasonable Doubt. One Gotta Go, London. Who would it be? A, Black Thought, B, Most Def, C, Common, or D, Talib Kweli? Oh my gosh, man. Oh my goodness. Shout out to most. Shout out to Talib. All of them dudes. I'm gonna go. I'ma go with thought. I'm gonna go with thought. One gotta go, bro. Is it A, J. Cole? Is it B Drake? Is it C Kendrick Lamar? Or is it D Childish Gambino? I'm gonna say childish because he can still act. $75,000 or the ticket to a Rock Nation brunch? Which one would you take? Mm. You said $75,000? Dang. Or brunch? Mm. I'm thinking about all the game I can get at that brunch. I think I'm going to go to the brunch. All right, all right. Erase one from hip hop history. Who would it be? A. Swiss Beats. B. Dr. Dre. C. Pharrell. Or D. Timberland. Oh goodness. Erase one from hip hop. I'm gonna go. Oh man. Pharrell. You made it to the end, bro. But if you had to erase one person from hip hop history, who would it be? A. Nas. B, the notorious B.I.G., C, Tupac, or D, Jay-Z? Whoever made this card, this 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 question needs to go. I'm this 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 the one I'm gonna use for my pass. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. London, thank you for playing the University of Dope. Unpopular opinions are welcome. It is all fun. It's all in the name of love. This is our culture. We love these artists. We love these producers. Um London, man. Music is a soundtrack to our life. For you, what song best represents your journey up to this point? Or which artist embodies what you are motivated and inspired to do? Man, you know, uh, the first name that kind of comes to mind is Nipsey Hussle. Just the idea of just, when, when you automatically, when you hear when you hear Hustle, it, it generates some sort of energy to get on top of your stuff. So off top, it, 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 will, be, it will be Nipsey Hussle, man. I just had the opportunity to open up the June Archer School of Arts where we teach young people, students about the business of music, DJing, graphic design, film and photography. 
what words of inspiration do you have to these young people or messages that you have for our adults, our parents, the importance of why we need to reimagine education at a higher frequency for our young people? The one thing that I would say, um, going back to what we spoke about earlier, is do something every day that puts you closer to where you want to be. You got to ask yourself, <clears throat> how bad do you want what you say you want? Because a lot of people, they say they want the stuff, but they got the discipline to back it up. So I know for me, I wish somebody would have told me early on, because I grew up in the 80s where it was just, you know, police officer, fireman, teacher, doctor, lawyer, and if he was good at, at dribbling the ball, sports. He had about six options, something like that. I wish somebody would have told me, London, you can do photography. You can cut hair. The things that you enjoy, the things that you do really, really well with the least amount of effort is the gift. And and we got to mm. hone in on that. I'm going to hear Steve Harvey mention that one day. And that's a real thing. So whatever it is that you're really good at, stop waiting, stop waiting. We don't have time like that. Start today, get focused early so you can live the life you want to live down the line. London, thank you so much for that message, man. I know these young people are definitely going to be inspired and motivated to follow their dreams, man. Yeah. So where can we find you? Where can we follow you? What is up next for you, brother? Um, <clears throat> so what's up next is we're right now we're going to shooting uh, season two of, uh, of Raising Canaan. And so that's taking a lot of my time. But in the process of that, still working these clubs and working on new material. Um, so I'll probably be getting on the road once we... Once I wrap up this whole thing and, and get down to the cities and get in with the people. So there are some things in the way. Um, and we'll probably just double back on the, on the next interview and talk about the films and all of that kind of a thing. Definitely. Um, definitely. Me at Real London Brown, at Real London Brown. I go live with my followers and I'm, I'm a regular down to earth kind of dude. So I'm always communicating and touching down with the people. So thank you, man. Listen, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to give us at least one or two impressions before you get out of here, man. You you got to give us a little something. Um, this one is this, this is the one people really enjoy, but if uh, we'll take it, if, if, if Denzel, if Denzel hadn't encouraged, uh, encouraged your students, man, you would say, um, uh, first off, I want to thank uh, June for having me about uh, this and, uh, I just want to say, with all you got inside, you make sure that you you do something that you know make you happy on the inside, and you work hard, you stay focused, uh, you stay disciplined, and uh, whatever it is you want, you gotta ask yourself how bad, how bad do do you want whatever it is you say you want? Boom. <laughs> Thank you, Denzel. I appreciate you. I, who else did you bring with you, Denzel? Who else did you bring with you? Uh, who else was that? Let me see. Um, I'm trying to think of some people I hadn't. I hadn't. You know, it's crazy out here. The whole thing, you know, <laughs> it's making sure you, you work hard. I work really hard for what it is you want. <laughs> I haven't done that in a minute. But it's crazy out here. The whole thing, how it moves. It's, it's exciting. You know, I like how it goes. I like the whole thing. I haven't got hold of a minute, but uh, actually working on the few coming out of this whole, you know, uh, out of filming and everything. So I'm going to throw them on stage and see how it work, how it work out, man. But thank you, man, for just even allowing me to be here, brother. That's man, the we appreciate you. We love you. Listen, if you're watching, you're listening, uh, you heard it from London Brown. Make sure whatever you do counts. Time is a commodity that we cannot get back, people. Life is short, but guess what? Uh, what we've learned over the past year and a half is... Life is even much shorter. And uh, do something every day. London says do something every day that allows you to walk in your greatness. Walk in your dopeness so that you can be unapologetically dope at what you do. Really and Khaled says it, man. Watch out for day, man. Watch out for day. They don't, they don't want to see you win. But London gave us some gems that we could take with us moving forward to allow us to see the light at the end of the tunnel. London... We appreciate you. We love you, man. God bless you. Guys, this is June Archer for the Winner Circle here. This is 50.com. Thank y'all for tuning in. Like it, love it. 
Tell someone you love them. It might be the last time you have the opportunity to do so. We love you. Thank you all for tuning in. Peace. Peace.